You're listening to the Mahogany Says Show with your host, Mahogany Silverine, on Blog Talk Radio, mahoganysilverine.net. Henry Santana, a misunderstood millionaire with a playboy reputation, will be whatever it takes to transform historic Newport, Rhode Island's waterfront into the world's largest five-star resort community. Victoria Hathaway, an introverted bookseller, is fearful of losing all she holds dear, a thriving business along Newport Harbor and her multi-generation colonial home that stands in the way of the resort community. Sparks fly when Victoria meets Henry, a handsome stranger, until she discovers he's the one who is threatening to take her land. Desperate and determined, Victoria struggles to save her home and her livelihood, while ignoring her growing attraction for the man who threatens to destroy it all. The Prodigal's Desire, book one of the Seaside Desire series by author Valerie Lynn, available on Amazon in both Kindle and paperback. Get your copy today. You're listening to Mahogany Says Show with your host, Mahogany Silverine. On Blog Talk Radio, blogginsilverine.net. Hello and good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Mahogany Says Show. I am your host, Mahogany Silverine, and we've got a great show for you tonight. We are doing a live read with uh, Jay Z Lozano. Say hello, Jay Z. Hello, how are you, everyone? <laughs> I'm good. Okay, how are you great doing? Evening. Hanging in there, <laughs> hanging in there. So yeah. You put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys, this is my battle buddy. He's an Army veteran, and I'm an Air Force veteran, so go figure, but we're friends. So <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Army likes to make fun of the Air Force because we're like, Kind of bougie, I guess. <laughs> but uh, we are going to, I know, right? <laughs> we are going to read her book, Operation Night Mixer 1, The Carnal Maneuvers by the Soldier Who Lives by the Lake. And it's a romantic, psychological, suspense noir. So be ready for some hot stuff. So let's get into this. And we will start with a little introduction to our main characters. That would be Sergeant First Class, Sebastian King, and L. So Sergeant First Class King, he has a master's degree in psychology, which helped him, his psyche, to make sense of the world, his feelings. But most of all, the need to slake the ever-darkening carnal Bless his gorgeous, sexy, and ever pining heart. Secretly, however, all that boy ever wanted was to be loved and to love, dom or no dom, alpha male or no alpha male. Throw so rejection by the one woman he loved with every fiber of his being into the mix, and goodness, safe to say, the beast within him, however calm and graceful, is a cunning and ferocious at any king of the sexual jungle. And it wanted revenge and arrested to his ever-deepening pain. Without a shadow of a doubt, the only thing that boy would leave behind on that lake up North Georgia is physically scorched earth. Not a surprise since special forces type are perilous and hardcore lovers when they feel slighted by love interest or worse a love interest who would make them feel second best while knowing full well that they had given their absolute all to make it work, period. The downside, however, results in them plummeting deeper into their psyche's primal dark abyss. On the other hand, L was damn L, whether or not she, he felt she and her libido needed rescuing. To keep and suborn that hard and stone of a lover He'd have to bring his ass back into the 21st century, both idyllically and carnally, with a quickness 
They were no longer in the Eastern Theater fucking like out of control reprobate. But in Georgia and the competition for L's sensual and intellectual sensibilities were in higher demand than that boy could have ever surmised. Only, which only fueled his determination and hunger. I'm talking to the point of his eyes bulging from anger and jealousy as he often sucked in the trickles of blood as he bit down too harshly on his lips. Sebastian wasn't about to surrender or throw in the white flag without a fight, and not in a million years. Note to file, at least. That damn soldier had a plan. He would love her and fuck her back to life and into both S.F.C. King's heart and soul, his way and on his terms. How on earth will that fucking action plan work out for him, though? Clearly, he was getting a bit ahead of himself. If he wants to win this game, Sebastian had better pull back from his duffel bag of tricks with a vengeance, which he should have known, of course, because when it comes to Miss L, it's a total zero sum in state, meaning winner takes all. There will be no if, and, or buts about it. The only question lurking in the depths of both their darkness is this. Who will win? And who shall lose in this game of psychological and philosophical race into hedonistic darkness? Dinner Under the Stars Sebastian and Elle landed upon the south shore of the lake like two stealth bombers, literal to zero sound on their end. Obviously, their skills were still intact. In truth, the lovers were still both horrified and spent. They were being hunted, as if the two lovers were runaway slaves. And no shit, they were. Plus their primal twist, twist, <laughs> excuse me, before the breaking of that glass window had been exposed by his brother and sister-in-law, of all people, they were spent, all right. Not a surprise, considering it's from the heated sex page prior to their rapid exodus and amphibious landing. They will be held to pay for that back window, and it's more than any words could ever express. The couple wore this notion upon their no, we didn't just do that, horrified faces, as the setting sun gleamed upon their flesh, exposing their rapid heartbeats and coy wings. Of course, they were also laughing as if they were two naughty and tenacious teenagers who had just broken all the rules, rebels. <laughs> I have to roll my eyes at the rambunctiousness of it all. Speaking of the setting sun, it felt as if a pseudo-spotlight had followed the lovers. However, it still did nothing to hold back the sneaky and snarky smirk forming on the couple's faces from their naughty deeds. It reminded them of the old times. The two were notoriously known for naughty deeds back in the theater. The lovers constantly tested and broke all the rules. Among, along as with many of their Ten Commandments, as possible. I can even remember one of the brazen answers, clear as damn day. Sneaking out into the desert one moonlit night while our company was on high alert, simply because they were bored as hell. Weapons secured to their naked bodies as the best Sebastian pulled fell into his lap, half naked, hearts pumping wildly from passing gone wild in fear of being caught by either side, and its extra sensual and intimate sentence to their dark and dirty deeds. Suddenly, the beast inside soon took over the helm. He snatched Elle from the front seat of his air humvee totally and utterly out of final and carnal inclusion. Plugging, plunging his snark, his snaking and carnivorous tongue so far down her throat, he nearly cut off her airway. But that's my battle buddy number two, King, for you. Seconds later, SFC King began thrusting Elle's body against the side of their vehicle as he snatched her battle dress uniform shirt wide open to suckle the shit out of her erect nub as their insolent and impet- as those insolent and impatient hands of his went to work. BDU buttons began flying everywhere off Elle's battle dress top, the likes of an AK-47 jacket full of bullets. Damn nation, boy. First, 
They clenched themselves together like a vice around her sweaty throat to give it a tight squeeze. Hands firm and confident, not so much as a single tremor. Those brawny and muscular hands of his never failed. Total dom and king mood, if ever there was one. She needed to know just who the hell was in fucking charge, whether she outranked him or not. Next, he slides his knee in between her long, quaking, and impatiently awaiting legs to spread them wide open. Hell's nectar of the gods stripped slowly to the ground beneath her feet, fertilizing and quenching its need for moisture and nourishment. Keen fucking love and reeled from the sight. His eyes sprung open and alert at the view of his love's robust and supple bosom, driving him madder and darker with heated ecstasy as he licked those illustrious and full lips of his to soothe their cracked and dried surface. Elle's eyes were piercing and focused. Her chocolate diamonds sparkled via the bright moonlit stars' desert sky as they spoke in volumes. You wouldn't dare, would you? And thrust went, thrust when I say those eyes, like Hale's libido, were bellowing with a plea of please take me now. Sebastian knelt before her, as if paying homage to an ancient Grecian goddess, which is astonishing within its, which was astonishing within itself, because my girl Elle was a goddamn foregone conclusion by this point. But my boy was all in. Nothing would stop this train. It had already left the station. Effortless to stop himself, some first class king reached up in an effort to slide Elle's utility pants down towards the ankle portion of her boots as he rubbed his nose slightly against her hairy outer sanctum, inhaling inhaling her well groomed hairy thicket softly and tenderly, simultaneously taking in every drip of L sensual rawness, sweetness, pheromones, sweaty flesh, and light fragrant scent. Between the ever brazen throes of submission and wantonness, L sensually bewildered eyes met his again in utter total submission. As she dug her nails into the side of their humvee from passion and rapturous ple- rapturous rapturous pleasure. That was all that damn boy needed. Unable to prevent his masculine essence from dripping onto the desert floor prematurely, you gotta love that dangerous liaison. Perfume body oil. No man on this earth can ever resist that body oil on a woman. None. King always felt that damn scent was one of the sexiest elixirs he had ever, he had to, ever had the pleasure to be old. Oh, yes. He can be quite the romantic at times, hence the dark balance. However, this wasn't one of them. King was a brazen, fiery beast on this night. It was no wonder, though. Couple all this naughtiness with a full-blown, fat-ass, robust moon and an enigmatic Arabian night, so to speak. His carnal philosophy was always consistent and spot-on. Go dark or stay at home. All the other elements of nature simply serve as brazen catalytic converters of their primal instincts, along with those four Persian daggers hidden in ill boots. Hoorah! Which forced her lover smirk to hang in the left corner of his mouth from utter delight and pride. Total turn on. Driving as if the king's sensually and intimately ever darkening spirit to its respective end state, so to speak. Fuck her till she drops or rather collapse in his arms. Um, good luck with that. That dom and soldier needed this type of dark naughtiness to go on in order to serve to the absolute best of his ability. Make no mistake about it. Loving that woman his way and on his terms was not a finite revelation. Was not just a finite revelation. It could only be one thing and one thing only, a total done deal of submission and liberation. Before she could take in another breath, 
His tongue licks and laps against her pleasure temple in rapid and heated repetition. Elle's heart nearly leapt out of her chest from the sensation and torture of the gesture. Rather than scream too loudly and alert half the Middle East, Elle plunged her fist into the depths of her mouth, muffling her screams and pants from the rapture. While triplets of wet, dewy moisture dripped from the left side corner of her mouth, she was no longer turned on. Elle was a damp, sizzling, hot white with pleasure, desire, needing both. To sue and get Correct. Uh, <laughs> okay. I turned the page, but I'll let you finish that sentence. <laughs> okay, not a problem. <laughs> to sue and, sm- and smother the infernal swirling wildly between her thighs. Safe so to, to say. say mm hmm. This was not a damn drill. Goodness ensuring that those chocolate diamonds of hers met his, asserting her approval, blinking not once, and neither taking her eyes off a sergeant first-class king. Again, the esoteric lingo said all that needed to be said at that moment. Damn, you feel so fucking good to me, baby. I can't help but iterate that those fucking strong, muscular knees of hers buckled and tightened around Sebastian, nearly snapping his neck. Surprised as hell, <laughs> our battle buddies never heard the gasp of approval from our lips as we watched in the reprobated bewilderment. Gotta admit, though, we relieved and soiled ourselves like crazy. It was extreme. But hey, don't even fucking fix our mouths to judge us. Not every masculine type here and soldier was like starting first class king. Just saying. We couldn't help ourselves. That view was like watching all three trilogies of 50 fucking shades of gray. I mean, really, y'all. We were going through. (laughs) We were wrong, though. But it couldn't be helped. Soldiers need loving, too. If we can't get it for ourselves, we will live vicariously through one of our own in order to get and see the thrill of it all. But starting first class king was like a sensual madman out there in the middle of the desert getting his damn carnal swerve on as Elle amped up the heat herself. Of course, that drove that damn boy madder and madder with wanton passion. He couldn't help himself. Sergeant first class king had that damn naughty and dark side to him, which, like it or not, was a very needful thing. We were all in combat mode and the killings and firefights were eating away at our idle minds. In our eyes, this was the perfect distraction. And it was the only thing that counted. We didn't give a breath ass about opinion where this kind of naughty pleasure is concerned. None. After not being able to take any more, we watched like green trolls from Envy via our thirsty libidos as our beloved Sergeant First Class King snatches L into his lap and vehicle for the finish as she pounds his slick and hard steely masculinity into her to the point of her dart of her back arching nearly a hundred and eighty degrees. Her thrusts were hard, forceful, and most of all impertinent. But rather of them but neither of them were sorry for their bliss. Nothing on or off this earth could stop her which is why she went for all that within their carnal kid, uh, in their carnal kitty and nearly rocked <laughs> their own bee to the point of a near tip over. Elle's cornrows inadvertently were pulled loose by him in the interim as he continually wrapped them deeper around his hand and let damn soldier speed his hot milky whiteness into her tight and warm carnal canal. Excuse me. It was an obscene as captivating and astonishing. King nearly lost it, forcing him to wrap his hands around her corners with the force of nature and holding on to what little primal reserves that damn boy had left in that sexy warrior-like body of his. Sergeant First Class King held on so hard, he practically ripped her beautiful braids from her scalp, 
He was lost as hell in that moment of carnal deliverance. One might wonder why such a moment was considered carnal deliverance. And to state, quite frankly, it's because El's intimate and sensual essence was like nothing of or on this earth. The silkiness and tight warmth brought his mental lost ass from the brink of blowing his brains out every time. We all watched as Sergeant First Class Team cupped his hand over her mouth as she screamed from utter excitement and relief. In the interim, he left teeth marks and prickles of blood dripping into the sandy soil below while her body shook and quaked both their bodies and the Humvee. They, the ground earth, and us camouflage voyeurs fucking shook with L. My ass, for sure, was a sweaty and car <laughs> was sweaty and envious hot mess. Hell, fire, and damnation. Mr. Wink's eyes filled with both terror and ecstasy. They were turned on to the point of salivating out of the corners of his mouth. Well, both of the corners of their mouth, and by both the threat and thrill of it all. What wonders those two lovers were afforded to behold. Toes curled into knots from the sensation. Feet stretched into the ballerina point. Hearts pounded like a drum, while... The moonlight crests its brilliant, its brilliant upon their wet and clammy flesh. Two tongues tracing up and down, totally forbidden, intimate sanctuaries, only resting for a moment to take in short breaths. But in their minds, they were at Hilton Head, no pun intended, and they had just caught that quintessential wave of readiness, of madness. Then again, they made love and fuck like jackrabbits to the point of becoming totally spent as damn hell. Finally, they surreptitiously sneak back into their prospective quarters, as if no major event between the two lovers ever happened. Uh, newsflash, we four or five female battle buddies were in the bush watching damn near every thrust and release. We nearly relieved ourselves on the spot. It was unreal. And a secret None of us would ever divulge. But damn, did they really think we'd miss out on that fucking fiery shit? L forget sometimes. We lived vicariously through her ass, both primally and carnally. Y'all's asses better know the damn difference. I think not, though. What a secret to have in the quarry of our minds for the duration of our lives. Sorry, I digress. Back to the southern, the South Valerian. Laughing as if they were giddy school children who just pulled off a naughty prank, the couple's eyes met each other's line of sight. As Elle's lashes fluttered with coetish comportment, her carnal partner in crime shot over a shamefully delicious wink as he dropped his head into those brawny and talented cups of hand, cupped hands of his. Of course, this was accompanied by the licking and lapping up of that sensual dewiness that splatters all over his lips every time he's been naughty as fuck. Damn, baby. Here Damn. we fucking go. Oh, I'm sorry. You're supposed to read that up. Go ahead. My bad. No, go ahead. You're Damn, baby. Damn, baby. Here we fucking go again. Thank God, though, because my ass needed this fucking shit. Sebastian, Sebastian resounded, firm. resounded firmly as he landed another dewy kiss upon Elle's chiseled jawline. Thank you. I feel, I feel fucking alive, baby. This feeling is exhilarating as hell. You know exactly what I mean. Her lover yells with both adulation and fury, but he's serious as ever, though. The proof was evident in the manner of his muscular extremities twitched and rumbled, from head to toe, only happened when he was turned on or turned up. Moreover, these glorious diamonds of his were shooting off wicked winks in the lights of a cat gone wild. Although both decadent and lascivious, the reality of their former dirty deeds began to sink deeper into that vast psyche of his. Shit, baby. We fucked hard as hell in that damn Humvee. 
like we did in the desert that time. You remember the fuck shit we used to do back in the theater, right? That damn boy couldn't stop laughing and shaking his head from side to side. Whether he realized it or not, his state was an indication that he was literally a million miles away. His piercing eyes as he gazed upon her flesh immediately invoked a million goosebumps to begin their road march up and down her wet and heated body. She said not a single word, nor thought of answering his inquiry, only continued standing fast they wrapped her arms around her curvy silhouette. Still, she was shivering and shaking like a leaf, though I believe she didn't realize it, knowing full well that she was no shrinking violet. I guess it was from the realness of the moment and the situation. My bet, 10 to 1, L, was calculating what moves and response to endeavor. Sebastian had to have had some type of temporary brain fart. L becomes very stoic and non-responsive when she senses any type of fear or uneasiness. My battle buddy was strategizing her way. Hence, the real and true reason for the non-verbal response to King. After all, we are besties, so not only do I know her, I get her. Leaning over her frontal plane as his body cast light shade over Elle, he pulled her body closer to his. His kisses and nips landed their soft, aerial bombs. He watched his L silhouette shivers and quakes from his deep. A short gasp of laughter forced its way to the tip of his long tongue, which plunged out of his mouth with zero regret and capitulation, salivating at the mouth from his newfound carnal power. And Sebastian, being Sebastian, he forced his tongue down L's throat one last time before the couple began their departure from the lake's edges. Time was of the essence, and as their and as for their safety, so to speak. Sebastian reached over towards Elle as he simultaneously laid his hands upon her shoulder to give it a slight shake. It was another esoteric gesture between the lovers, and a very needful one at the moment, since Elle was slipping into a bit of her own mental and emotional abyss. He needed reassurance that the two lovers were on the same sheet of music, hence the gesture of shaking her into their momentary peril. Good thing he did, because Elle's ass was not as focused as she should have been. He needed her former skills, front and center. She couldn't have given his body and situation the proper cover it needed without being focused and present. Soldiers, fuck yeah. Looking his lover eye to eye, he gave her another wink. Girly girl, it looks like it's going to be dinner amongst the stars tonight. Hmm, hon, hmm. What do you think, baby? Sebastian yelped at her. With nothing short of a, nothing's going to stop me from dressing right dressing that ass tonight. Kind of pompous and sure look within his eyes. Elle looked Sebastian deep in his eyes as her inner sanctum remained throbbing from the rhythmic orgasm still happening from deep within inside her. Despite this, she managed finally to speak. We got to move like hell, baby. Just tell me where to. This one fact is certain as hell. She recanted via short gasp and snarky smuts. You and I got to get the fuck off this lakefront straight away, boy. Because your damn brother and his bitchy ass wife are going to want our blood for the shit we just pulled. Her eyes were bloodshot red and flickering wildly as she looked downward towards the concrete square blocks of the stairs leading up to the South Solarian's entrance, as if all the answers to their prevailing issues were written into its grainy cracks and crevices. However, they were not. Of course, this was just her way of focusing on something still and strong to regain a more aggressive posture. God help Sebastian's brother and wife. That damn heifer was rapidly ascending into a more mentally combative and aggressive mode at this point, readying herself for a firefight as if it were to come. Finally, she was on the same sheet of music. Any confrontation with this couple, King and Elle, would not end well for King's brother and wife, bitchy, son of a bitch, or not. You see, the redirection of her mental state was a damn power move. Needless to say, it worked like a fucking charm. 
Within seconds, her crimson lofty eyes met Sebastian's with capricious discernment for their safety and well-being. Overlooking the fact that those gorgeous eyes were becoming more hostile as all get out. This is because his brother was a meaner son of a bitch than Sebastian, but just not as skilled in combat and covert modes of operation. However, L had enough wherewithal mentally and intimately, and intimately not to allow their sensual faux pas to mess up Sebastian's determination and operation. Grabbing her hands to give them a tight squeeze of assurance and approval, Sebastian iterates how the couple would move and maneuver going forward. Baby, dinner under the stars works like hell for me. Let's just fucking get to safety. Then do this. Eat, I mean. Her voice cascaded into a soft whisper as her recall memory flashed back to the lover's days on alert in the tight urban quarters, foothills, and mountains of Iraq. Her dearest lover and Don was so taken aback and pleased as hell by her commanding attitude and leadership in the moment that he simply bobbed his head up and down in agreement. But not to worry our pretty little heads, because Mr. Nightmixer, the Dom, was about to rear his pretty little naughty hindsight. Out of nowhere, his real intentions began to debut themselves before the gentleman's head. Well, I was going to surprise you later in the night. However, I believe now is as good a time as ever. Let's go on up and inside the South Solarium. It's hardly used, but tonight I had it prepared for us ahead of time. His girly slightly stepped backwards and wrapped those powerful arms of hers around her entire body. She wasn't about to let his ass blindside her or outwit her. Surprise my ass. That damn boy was planning to white plank the hell out of Elle's ass. After revealing his little secret something within her snap and she stepped back to create a bit of sparring space between Sebastian and herself. Oh, boy. Elle's arm flung forward, slapping the shit out of his chest and turning it slightly red. Boy, once inside this solarium, your ass is going to find a damn corner where you can unfuck yourself. You forget. I know your tactics and moves. Hell, we wrote the damn playbook together. As lovely a gesture as this is, and that you did, I know this is your way of attempting to take me off my damn A-game, boo. Because I know for sure, hon, your ass got a damn plan of operation if ever you had one. Her eyes blaze with scornful comportment as traces of dewy, clear, silky essence slithered down her inner thighs, contradicting every word, her every word of indifference. Elle was a bit pissed, yes, but nowhere near as turned on carnally. Sebastian was no longer controllable. Only her submission could soothe his angst, and she knew it. The Tempest style of sparring was all happening at the last of the setting sun above her lit-up, voluptuous silhouette. Bitch, you better call out my damn name before coming for me. I love you, though. She, she, she snickered, snickered without, a, without a single blink. <laughs> oh, boy. And you should know that her infamous smirk dangled to the left. Yes, military left. Corner of her mouth is vigor, vengeance, and profound defiance. Just making shit crystal clear between you and me, boo. This was just her way of handling things when she felt like someone was attempting to outflank her, foregone primal conclusion or not. Elle was making sure that Sebastian understood that she recognized the beginnings of his dark descent. Needless to say, that surprise, I caught you off guard, playing field had just been leveled. Damn. In the interim of her rant, her lover's posture became sterner and stellar. The beast within him began a slow and low pitched growl. From this point, Sebastian's thought and mindset was that he'd better tread lightly. And at this point, I will take a short commercial break while we get some water <laughs> and compose ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> 
So we'll be right back after this commercial. As a Miami nightclub owner, Paolo DeLuca takes to heart the code, A Life for a Life. He also has a personal code, Don't Screw the Help. However, it's getting more difficult for him to keep his eye off of his sexy bartender, Lyric Mason. He has no time for love, not with a rival gang muscling in on his counterfeit business. And when hell breaks loose, heads will roll. Lyric's grandfather warned her to stay away from the DeLucas. However, needing to pay for art school, Lyric does what she must do. But when she sees counterfeit bills filtering through the club, it brings her up close and personal with Paolo DeLuca. Time stands still, and Lyric is ready to throw away everything her grandfather warned her about DeLuca. Paolo DeLuca, part of the Savage Bloodline series by Tanika Brown. Available on Amazon. Get your copy today. Thank you for listening. You are listening to Mahogany Says Show with Mahogany Silver Rain and J.C. Lozano, reading her book, Operation Night Mixer, The Mistress L Chronicles. I mean, seriously, geez, he really has forgotten the few important attributes about his dear L. However, the dom within that damn boy would make her pay for such rebelliousness later. King was known for contradicting himself and his thoughts often. No surprise there. Nonetheless, L being L, she ranted on. I guess she found her big girl panties, which she'll find out later won't be on for very long. King's about to fucking bring it. For now, he'll let her have the clear the air, so to speak. Sometimes that motherfucker should steadily be stealthily batshit and cuckoo kachoo crazy. Dangerous and eerie, if you ask me. Next, and rather brazenly, she slammed her body against his, thrusting it backwards as Sebastian's eyes widened like a crocodile readying itself to strike. However, at that moment, he knew better. His cooler head prevailed. His ass just stood there, solid as hell, in his face, he was just forced into. Hmm, I wonder why. Gotta love that damn power move. Sebastian's male member swelled immediately as it throbbed and doubled in size. The dom was utterly and completely turned on. Well, there you fucking are. The damn dom and beast. She resounded loudly into his face and wide torso. Her words literally bounced off his protruding pecs and flesh. Needless to say, Sebastian was caught off guard and turned the fuck on even more at the same time. His massive hard-on spoke for him. I'm going to take that ass later. That damn girl put him in a position where he had no choice. He was player or not, he had to reveal his player hand. She caught that ass off his damn guard for a reason and had nothing to do with their current and potential peril. Oh, not stupid. Rhythmic orgasms or not, that damn diva was jealous. Let it be known that Sebastian leaves nothing to chance. He always created one form of enchantment or another. Savvy or not, my girl Elle was in for some keen, dynasty, primal tactical shit. Just had to let her ass know in the interim that she was on his tactics and or she was on to his tactics and maneuvers. If only Elle knew what would be in store for her. Or did she? Regardless, she went following behind Mr. King's lead. Big girl panties, hard nubs and all. They hit the water and swiftly swam like sharks in the dark murky depths of that damn lake to the southern side of the Solari. The solarium was set on the smallest part of three acres of posh and fertile land, always catching pretty unreal rises of the northern sun as well as the majestic and spectacular southern setting sun, which never missed an opportunity to give onlookers privy to many breathtaking sunrises and sunsets. Got to love this family's tenacity. They've purposely acquired the beautiful slither of land to woo its visitors and patrons. The King family dynasty were tacticians, and savvy that way. 
Its pristine location was one of the best. The primary reason Sebastian chose this location is to woo his dearest L. As the setting sun sank itself behind the quagmire of thickets of that gorgeous lake, it gave L and Sebastian great cover. The two lovers made it to the southern side of Solarin in no time, and like back in the day, with zero noticeability at all. You think? From the edges of the lake, the southern solarium poured itself, perched itself from that Georgia soil into onlookers' faces like the temples of ancient world history, built to worship all the gods. Her alabaster stones of brilliant beige and gray bricks pulled together like nothing viewers had ever seen, in perfect harmony and symmetry, as her chic, sexy, and old South grand veranda called out to onlookers to dare themselves to come on in and be welcomed by its multiple-level, patient-styled upper decks, ginormous porch fans from both Cuba and Portugal, and pristine early 20th-century-styled hand-painted windows would be the cardinals of the Vatican itself weep with, en- weep with envy. And not to forget mentioning those ginormous handcrafted oversized rockers, which were made of North Carolina cedar and Asian-style wicker from mainland Japan. Damn. Ironically, it was Sebastian's mom who designed it all by herself. Needless to say, Elle was quite astonished and bewildered by its uncanny beauty. In her eyes, not only was she beholding southern splendor and greatness, but she was also standing and would potentially be fucking inside a solarium that's so sexy as hell from an architectural point of view. <laughs> Way to go, Mrs. King. Of course, Elle would come to quickly assert that the solarium's real beauty and grandeur wasn't limited to just the outside as she followed after Sebastian, who never stopped racing into its grandiose entrance. Break on the loose, if you ask me. But somehow, wow factor just doesn't quite say it. Elle navigated her way through the entrance as slowly as possible, with eyes gorged open from awe and disbelief. Elle's jaw dropped wide open. Before her eyes debuted, four canopy daybeds draped in silks and linens from both the Orient and Switzerland, and colors of gold, mauve, and sand. No mistaking that. The dark herringbone-shaped German black forest wooden floors were warmed automatically by simply stepping upon them and by, and by which slowly began to warm the bottoms of her feet, step by step. With eyes bulging and swirling up and downward and all around in approval, she spoke softly. Baby, this is a place of new and ancient world beauty. I could only create in my wildest of imagination. Clearly, this small chalet was forged together to create a place most of us could only conjure in our wildest of dreams. And not to be funny, but this is quite the damn shagalicious spread, hon. Her eyes flickered both before she pinched the hell out of Sebastian and herself to ensure that all of this was real and not a dream. Her lover gave his heart a member of a slight squeeze as he shot over a smirk riddled in the mindset of, I came, I conquered, I win. However, I see you remember. Elle Bella, squeezing Sebastian's hand over the candlelit ebony wood dinner table. After the couple approached it slowly, releasing her hand from her only for only a brief moment, her lover walked over to the north wall, performing a series of motions. Purposely, Elle wasn't privy to witness them, but I believe she had some idea or inkling what that damn boy was up to. Plus, his swift exit afforded my girl the opportunity to pull her fucking shit together, whether her boo was suborning the upper hand or not. Smartly, Elle stood steadfast and awaited his return quietly and sternly. Still, however, her curious nature couldn't resist wondering where in the hell he'd gone Ever for those few short moments, Sebastian had just returned from his prize mixer booth to play her favorite Xanadu theme song. 
along with the hidden skyline opening up to the night sky. To say El was floored by the dazzling sight would be a big understatement. I'm talking about the best view of the skies and lake with the solarian impact with distant glass walls and a roofing that would make the president green with envy for its protective property. Fairy lights and tea candles strategically littered around the available floor space, walls and furniture, and a gorgeous love seat covered in the most beautiful green velvet Elle has ever seen. She could barely feel her nectar soaking through her panties at the thought of Sebastian taking her on that very sexy crouch, but paid it no heed as she was both exhausted and starved. Sebastian returned the squeeze on her hand with a smirk. I knew you'd love it, girly girl. If he wasn't famished from their earlier escapade, he had already hauled his dearest El bath over his shoulder and pounded her into pounded into her back beside the dear <laughs> I'm sorry, let me try this again. Pound her <laughs> pound into her beside that blazing hot fireplace. Then again, there may be some opportunity after that short reprieve. Your eyes are even sparkling like the stars themselves. Sebastian lifted Elle's hand to his lips and kissed the back of it. Elle smiled widely. The dinner date was simply enchanting. Words themselves aren't enough to describe it. And the meal. Elle inclined her head toward the spread of dishes before them. Those flickering, gorgeous chocolate diamonds of hers were met by quite the culinary sight. Grilled blackened salmon, rock lobster tails, sweet potato pies, fire charred broccoli and gouda cheese sauce, and good old fashioned south pork south pork rinds roasted in a late meat and game house. Napoleon Brandy, and Old Forester Whiskey. Those are from the Solarian... Go ahead. Those aromas from the Solarian's delicious spread slithered and snaked its way up Elle's nostrils slowly and sensually, releasing and taunting her to come devour them. No worries there. Mmm, baby. Are you trying to spoil me, Ryan? Elle inquired with a sexy and savory tone. Sebastian chuckled at that and pressed another wet kiss on Elle's hand. Anything for you, baby girl. Besides, you are so fucking worth it. You keep forgetting it. I fucking got you. Shall we dig in? That soldier's face lit the hell up with confidence and self-satisfaction. This rescue mission totally has taken on a life of its own. And indeed, it was. Elle nodded as Sebastian slowly pulled out his, her gilded dining chair of pure ivory and solid cherry. Before allowing him to depart, she slowly raised her free, his free hand to rub it gently against the side of her face, and her eyes cascaded slowly in approval. Her kiss was like an electric shock in her lover's mind. It traveled straight to his male member, hardening it like a brick. He said not a word as he traveled slowly towards the huge chair at the head of their table. Clearly, he was turned on and elated. Like a conquering king or general, he merely gestured his hands lightly toward their dinner. Elle picked up her silverware as soon as the gentleman and hero released his grip on her hand so that they could dig into their meal. There was little to no conversation between the couple, only murmurs of pleasure from the deliciousness of the delicacies before them. Mmm, baby, this tastes unreal. Elle whispered via purse lips, shooting a scary glare towards Sebastian. They only spoke with their eyes and busy hands, busy devouring their food and drink, that is. Sebastian said not a word. He merely bobbed his head up and down in agreement and satisfaction. Tea leaves red. Everything from there is hazy for Elle, since she was tired and still on cloud nine from the mind-blowing orgasm Sebastian had given her. And no shit. I'd be walking on cloud nine for hours, too, 
if I were in her shoes. Oh, <laughs> to be that fly, to, to be a fly on that wall of that swanky South Valerian. After the sun came down, the moon came out full and wide, looking pregnant as hell. By then, Elle and Sebastian had already finished their meal and were now a few drinks in. The gentlemen always liked having sweet desserts, and so, after setting their empty plates aside, he returned with a bowl of ice cream that looked like chocolate from the opposite end of their dining table to accompany those fluffy, sweet potato pies. Girly girl, you got to try this. Sebastian reached over to pull and slip a bite-sized chocolate into Elle's lips. Elle leaned forward and took the semi-hard confection between her teeth and bit down in it ever so sexily while holding his gaze. Sebastian's eyes flared as his male masculine member hardened like a steel rod as he held his beloved stern square yet again. The, light, the candlelight's glow illuminated her beautiful lion, lioness-like features in the dimly lit solarium, turning him on even more. Well, how is it? Elle popped the rest of the brownie into her mouth and moaned loudly, licking her lips as her long tongue played peekaboo with Sebastian's libido and imagination. She was trying and taunting the shit out of that damn boy. As she should. I'd kill for those deliciously decadent black licorice chocolate fudge brownies. Let me tell you, that hero and gentleman in Sebastian is going in for the kill with that classic aphrodisiac. Delicious, baby. Is that licorice I taste? Her eyes were beaming at this point. Are they really, hon? Mmm, darling. She whispered rather sensuously and slowly. Sebastian beamed. Yep. Made with the best black licorice. Oh, baby. Elle leaned back and swept her gaze around the solarium again, and her cheeks warmed at a distant memory conjured by the tea candles. And again, this has been Operation Night Mixer, the Mistress L Chronicle by J.V. Lozano. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. <laughs> so just to explain, for those who have not been in the military, can you, J.V., tell us what the theater means? Um, back in Iraq or Afghanistan or wherever we were stationed over in the Middle East. All right. So that was true battle. So when they say the theater, and if you hear someone say that now, you know what the meaning is. So tell us, Jay-Z, where can we find this book and give your information, your social media and website. Um, Operation Night Mixer is exclusive to Amazon, KindlePublishing.com. You can reach me at the Smoking Glass Literary Bar on uh, Facebook, my group, my author page, J. Divorce Luciano, J. V. Luciano. I'm on Instagram, Smoking Glass Literary Bar on Instagram. I'm on WordPress, which is my website, and I am also on TikTok, author J. Z. Luciano. Awesome. So I thank you for joining us tonight. I I enjoyed reading that, and I know we had some <laughs> little hiccups. But, you know. <laughs> we, guys, we cut up terribly, so don't yes, mind us. <laughs> because we, by us both, by we both being for, um, veterans and former soldiers, we get it. So we it's, it's, we're actually tickle pink. <laughs> some of the <laughs> mahogany teases me all the time. She's like that little sister that loves to jab you when you go to sleep at night. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I love it. Mm-hmm. She'll keep you straight. So you have to love and respect that. That's what that is, God. Don't yeah. mind us. And she, she yeah. is like a great big sister to me, so most definitely. I love her to yeah. death. I get on her nerve with the heat, but she understands. <laughs> 
Or when you have some power surges, you know, you got to, you know, cool it off. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and reading this book has given me some definite power surges. So, uh, you guys, Mahogany says pick this book up immediately. Because it gets on a different level. Easier. Oh, yeah. And Ooh. it continues throughout the book. So I'm telling you, and there's some plot twists in there you're going to really enjoy. So I highly yeah. suggest that you go get this book now. Order it. Powerful it's ending. Good. Yes. That will actually shock you, because I know it did me, and I like the book. I've, I've read it, and it's just, I'm not going to give any spoilers, but it's good. So, <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anything else to add? Yes. Um, thank you for your support, your kindness, your guidance, Always. everything. I love it. Always. I love it, love it, love it. You were born and to lead. <laughs> <laughs> you say so. <laughs> it's true. I a, usually she calls me a mess because I, I usually I tease her a lot. So she's like, girl, you're a mess. So. Oh, hot mess. <laughs> I love it. But she loves me, so I don't, how could I be mad at that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'd take a bullet for this one. I would, too. Most definitely. This one here is a keeper. And, yes, please go get this book, Operation Night Mixer. The Mistress L. You love our first class team. My yes, goodness. Yes, you will. Sebastian, when I say that damn boy, was it mm, very sexy <laughs> throughout the entire book. <laughs> so definitely run, whatever you got to do, pull up your laptop, your phone, and order this book. Ladies, he'll be your book. new best, uh, he'll be your new book yes. boyfriend. Definitely your new book boyfriend. And if you're not used to dating military men, Thank you, Tiffany. Mm. You might start looking. This is an opening no, to yeah. show you what to expect, right? Exactly. So, especially <laughs> if the what special forces, girl, they don't play. So. Uh-uh, girl. Let me stop. <laughs> Some of those special forces, mahogany's right. Some of those special forces guys are so hot. They come in hot and heavy. They mm-hmm. will make Christian Gray look like a schoolboy. Sure will. <laughs> Like My teacher doesn't quite get it. No. Exactly. Not at all. <laughs> I mean, think about it. What type of lover would tie you to the bed with wool military socks? <laughs> well, military wool socks, right? Hey, you got to use whatever's at hand, okay? You got to get pretty creative. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. You're a MacGyver, that stuff. <laughs> okay. uh, he's a MacGyver of passion. Most definitely. And, you know, yeah. it's like, you can actually picture this guy. I mean, just. Literally. You know, literally. But I thank you all for joining us. And I thank you, JV, for joining me tonight and allowing us to do a live read of your book. And I thank you all for joining me tonight. And we will be back next week with another interesting episode. But as I said, Amazon, go get it. And I wish you all blessings, peace, and love. Good night, night. everybody. You have been listening to the Mahogany Says Show with your host, Mahogany Silverine, on Blog Talk Radio, mahoganysilverine.net. Thank you, and good night.